Hello everyone, um, my name is Norman Saunders II and I'm doing my presentation on Houston, I'm doing on historical black colleges and universities should teach African American history as mandatory credits. Um, I feel a strong opinion that if we don't teach our history to our people, nobody is going to teach our history to us. To us. So, um, going to, belonging to a HBCU, I feel it's the requirements of learning a threshold of where we are, we can build a foundation to better help ourselves from a macro perspective. Just to give you a little, some insights on what, what it is that I found. We are the African, the African descent is the founding creation of the planet. But yet, the white, the Caucasian ideology is to hide that. For what reason? Not necessarily sure, but they want to paint the idea that they are the that they are the superior race, where statistics show at least 90 percent of global African American presence is on this continent, just just by the statues of what we see here, from Japan to Latin America. You have African features. You have, and it was found where um, it's called melanin. You have different. You have melanin within the cultural, which is a, a pigmentation that is located within the skin. Um, example, just another prime example of that, uh, from India to the Mayans, the Africoid features, features that the presence has before the Caucasian actually landed here to say that Jesus is white and the ideology was conformed that how we all conform to the ideology of beautification of which is white supremacy, which is incorrect. So like I was saying, melanin is the color of the skin that is found in African, uh, that's found in the African skin tone. Um, and basically, certain cultures um, excluded their melanin out of their skin tone by breeding light with light. Example in Australia, um, the Aborigine people, um, they, would, they made a camp in 1943 where they would actually breed the melanin out of people. And that's how they came up with a lot of Caucasians within the Australia area. This is another example of Africanoid features. Um, one thing that I wanted to highlight on here is the history of the Native Americans. When this is in our history, our history books, they tell us to focus on Christopher Columbus was the founder of this land that we that we walk on. But in our creations, it shows that Native Americans were here first. And then one thing about the history that I found that was most agonizing is how come I, we see so many Caucasian people that say that they're Native Americans? Well, back in the day, um, can't specify the year, um, but they had what was called the $5, um, the $5 Indian, which is 1896 actually. That's when <coughs> the land was going to go to Africans and Native Americans the Caucasian persuasion did not want that. So a Caucasian person could say, list me on this list from 1896, and that's going to be $5. So I just bought a whole bunch of land, and I get the same privileges and rights as the Caucasian, I mean, as the Native Americans do, where I can go, I'll have a generational period forever. All my children can go to school for free. I can reap the benefits. So a lot of Caucasians are still, um, getting these resources from this type of um, structure. So like I just showed here, these were Native Americans that actually adopted black children because that was something to do uh, back in the day due to the generational impoverishment that was oppressed for the African American culture. And one thing that I feel that is very strong that we need to do as a people here at HBCUs is to teach the culture to us. And then one thing also to educate the student to let them know about today's society of what's going on from a macro perspective of how blacks are affected. Example, I found this very interesting. 13th Amendment reads, slavery is abolished except when are found guilty of a crime and go to jail. Same thing denied Africans when you go to jail, slavery is very much still alive. What that means is back in I can't remember, from 1954 when the Black Panthers um, first started their, their, their actual movement. They were, 
before the jail system, it wasn't that acclimated where Caucasians didn't need to specifically um, go to jail. So what they did, Caucasians sent the African, they sent the police to the African American neighborhoods to go attack the African Americans. And when they did that, that started riots. And after these riots, you know, it's, it's still accumulation of how the, the black male is incarcerated, which is like, you either do an act of genocide, which is to completely annihilate, or you would do an act of enslavement. So that's what the 13th Amendment that I see that found black people are branded to jail in this generation, because now, now due to the jurisdiction of marijuana use and other illegal activities that Caucasians can do, and it is be a white collar crime, but if an African American does it, then he almost has life in prison. So I feel that just today, we need to bring awareness of the African descent to our students and letting everyone know about today's history and how it affects us in the long haul. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.